What I'm gonna show you this week is something I've been working on for months. It has to do with my wingtips. I had an idea a while back when I was first learning to fly a tail dragger. This is decades ago. And I was worried about ground looping a plane. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> yet. I hope I never do. But I've watched a lot of people live actually ground loop their plane, hit their wingtip, skid around, and I thought to myself, man, if I could just catch that wing and, and maybe lift 50 or 100 pounds of pressure, I could stop that ground loop. I mean, it just happens so slow. Sometimes there isn't damage, but unfortunately, most of the time when that wing hits, there's a shock load force that goes through the spar. It usually bends the aileron, bends the tip, when really it would take very little to stop that wing from impacting. So since I fly a backcountry plane, it's a little more radical. I go into some really fun places. I decided to try and make something I thought of a while ago. So I don't know what to call it. It's either gonna be a tip skid or a tip stinger. I think I'm gonna call it a stinger because how it turned out, it looks like a little bit of a stinger on a fish. I'm really excited about it. What I'm gonna do, is build a way to take the impact of a ground loop, absorb it with suspension out of a carbon fiber and fiberglass combo, basically a leaf spring on a wingtip. The reason I'm doing it this way is I wanna transfer the energy of the impact from out at the back of the wing where it wants to twist the wing, and I wanna transfer it into the center of the wing so the load is where the wing is designed to take it, and up towards the front of the spar and give it 14, 16 inches of travel and maybe be able to absorb about six to 800 pounds of impact before you could even get to touching your wing. Now, where I got this idea was reading up on some really old warbirds and aircraft from back prior to runways. Someone had this idea first, it always comes up. I just thought maybe I could modernize it. Before they had runways, they would put wood blocks on the ends of biplanes that were landing in cornfields in the dirt, and it was a wood, like a plywood edge, so that if they screwed up or bounced around, it would crunch and break off, but it wouldn't wreck their airplane. The way they did that is they could just unbolt this broken up board and bolt a new one on. I'll show you how I did it, so I hope you like the video. Let's get at it. There's my starting block of aluminum. It's about 800 pounds. We're gonna cut it up into chunks of 150 pounds and then cut that into something that weighs only a couple of pounds. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. All right, we just finished cutting what will be the largest piece of metal that I will turn into the lightest weight part. But this weighs about 150 pounds. And uh, we're gonna turn it into one tiny wingtip extension. <laughs> this is my cheater bar. These Allen wrenches are set in tight. So my first part is done of four to make my wingtip extensions that hold my wingtip skids. So uh, give me a second and I'll have this out of the machine. So I got the last of four big parts. I'm really excited because I, these parts actually had about 40 hours of machine runtime and six setups per part of flipping, twisting, changing. This is the last one, four of four. Two of them already on the aircraft on the ends. These two, the wingtips will attach here. This is a step 
layer that allows this to slide perfectly onto the part of the wing. The reason I made it so strong is for my new wing tip stingers. Number 404 is done. It's been running on the machine for a long time. I think I started these parts three weeks ago and I'm finally done with the last one. So let's get it on. This is the structural component to tie into the other one that matches it that's already tied into the frame. The skins bleed across it. I've tied into the spars, the front mini, the main primary uh, forward uh, central spar and the rear. I've tied into all of them with this matching part. Like a club. That is perfect. So I'll put nut plates all the way down this and put uh, 1032 screws down it. Then I'm going to attach the carbon fiber wing tip to this permanently. I've got a step in it right here for the carbon fiber attach point. That will be riveted on permanently and then covered with carbon fiber so you don't see the rivets, they'll be blind. And then this can be painted and come on and off as one complete part with the tip on it. I extended the aileron so you can see the aileron is longer than it used to be. The wing ended here. Here's one part I put on, the extended aileron. So I machined this part to have the step in it and the carryover for the back to encapsulate that extended aileron. So I got great clearance. Um, I couldn't be any happier. So let's put a wing tip on it. Get back to work. This is actually two pieces, so I can see them. I've got them green and silver. This is to hold the new light assembly I'm building for Draco. It's gonna, uh, there's a cross section I've got pulled up so I can, you can see how they overlap each other. And this area right here is where I pinch the light. And right here is a step where I pinch the, the lens. I've got to make a, a dome circular lens for this right here. And the light will sit here pointing that way. This back step right here is for the carbon fiber attach point where I then blend to the new wingtip. I'm really excited. It's, uh, it's almost one in the morning and we're gonna turn this 18 pound solid block of aluminum round bar into a part that weighs a few grams. It's gonna be the inside ring that attaches to the carbon fiber wingtip that then has a light and a lens on it. I'm excited. I'm gonna go till they're done. There's the first light ring done. It's got the pre-drills of all my nut plates. There'll be another ring that goes on here, but inside real close, hard to see. The little teeny steps, and that is so that the, it's designed exactly to the light so the light will snap in. Then the cover ring will go on it, and it will also hold a plexiglass dome I've got to make for it. So I'll have a rounded face, the light, a ring, and then this part will be riveted to the carbon fiber mold I've got to do that ties into the wingtip. So that's the start of a whole lot of work, but it's going to turn out awesome. Three more to go and uh, we'll get back to carbon fiber. What I've got here is the remnant of the wingtip that I already had. The front is, was a completely different shape. So I've kind of cut a few pieces, extended the front of the wingtip but that entire section I couldn't use and this I just bonded new. So I've got a starting point. The back of the wingtip is not long enough. I've got to come out three more inches to match up with the extended ailerons I did so they pair up. So I'm basically stretching the front, stretching the back. To do that, I've just put on a simple piece of aluminum as a guide. I'll start laying up carbon on this side, bend it up. I can take the metal off, go to the back side, micro it, layer it, and I can take this big fat quarter, uh, almost half inch thick, which sucks. <laughs> it's really draggy. And I'll taper that all the way back to the new length at just uh, about 3 sixteenths of an inch in all carbon. So I've got to modify this. You can see the new aluminum part that's already ready to go, permanently connected to the carbon fiber. So this, when I'm done, will slide up on that wing tip. It's really lightweight still, even though it was a big chunk of metal. I've got uh, four layers of carbon fiber. I used micro bubbles mixed very light so it wouldn't add much weight to bridge the gap from this part to the metal I put on the back. It's a very thin layer that's creating the taper. So now 
I'm just gonna feather out that joint and uh, work out the last bubbles under here. That's actually micro. Smoothed out, I'll put some peel ply on it. I'll finish working it a few more times. I'm not gonna bag this part just for a little extension. If I get this peel ply on it and I squeegee out all the resin possible, it's gonna be really strong and I'll just let it naturally cure. So I got about five more minutes of working it. I got a little bubble here I gotta work out. I'll get that cleaned out and we'll be done. Be ready to do the other side tomorrow morning. Here's how we're doing this. I've got my new metal frame, aluminum frames in here. I've got the old wing tips. Right here is a completely new shape, even though I, you can see some of the old carbon fiber I used to change to the new shape, just to give me an anchor point on the sides to bring out a new bagged finished carbon fiber. But this little part right here is just an attach point and permanently locked on. These are my light rings, and they kind of look funny sticking out here now, but <laughs> this is where we'll see if I have any artistic ability at all. What I've done is I've anchored them they're locked on solid, so the lights are fixed. I did that by putting the wingtips up on top of the plane, setting the plane down at ground attitude, tail down, flight attitude up, and then picking the angle I wanted. I'm really happy with the angles I got for the lights. I bent these aluminum bars to get the curve I want, so these bars will stay permanently attached inside the carbon. This carbon will be really thin. It doesn't need much strength, so this will help keep everything rigid with the lights. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to duct tape a little tray, put a cardboard around it, pour some foam in, fill this all up with foam, and I'm gonna blend a new shape from here all the way to here in foam. Then I'll make a part on it, I'll pull the part off, take out the foam, and cut out whatever excess carbon fiber is inside here that isn't the correct shape, and then I'll bond that back on. So that's the process. It's gonna take a while. <laughs> this is my project for the day through the night. Back to work. Foam and carbon. This is the starting point. Foam just sticking out everywhere. <laughs> Hopefully I don't stand too far or cut too much. Hacksaw on a blade works really good to trim it down. You can take off big chunks in a hurry. Cheese grater type tool. Flexible sander. Hard sander. Block. And then of course by hand. So I'll use all of those and I'll see if I can make this blend and look cool. That work. Well, <laughs> I'm about done with one. I've got it all the way down to pretty close. Um, and then I'm gonna go to a finer paper. I'm gonna take it down about another 16th of an inch. I got tiny, tiny little imperfections. I'll get it really close. Uh, lay up some carbon and then we'll do the fine tuning. And I should only need a fraction of micro to fill in. Um, turned out really good, really blended nice, so I'm pretty happy about that. Anyway, to the next one. It's finally dry enough to go put on the plane, so <laughs> um, it's so close. So I got both my wingtips done. This is like the most rewarding part when you finish paint is just peeling off the tape. <laughs> I don't know what it is. There's something that feels good about that. I've made a new design for my wingtip. I'll tell you why. Wilgas are notorious for being ground loop. A bunch of them get done. This one's had it twice. Not by me yet. Uh, if you haven't flown a Wilga, it may not make sense, but it has a thing that's known in the Wilga world as the Wilga walk. And what it does is this trailing link gear, which is not on bush planes, has so much travel that if you land in a little crosswind, and you plant and a wing starts to lift, it can actually squat one gear full travel and the other one goes full up. The wing can literally drop halfway to the runway and here's the problem. The plane actually still wants to go straight, but when you got a little crosswind and all of a sudden the plane moves that much and it happens right now, a pilot's tendency is to correct what feels like a hard turn. You feel like you induced a ground loop when in fact, usually you haven't. It's hard to differentiate the difference if you're not familiar with the wing walking way down and your body falling out of your seat uncoordinated 
whether that's you slipping your tail out and the wing took a hold of you, which may have been what dipped the wing, or if you're still in fact going straight. And so the instinctive reaction is to do what you should, which is run your feet. But oftentimes that plane may still be perfectly straight and the will to walk has begun. And the pilot starts to chase this walking wing it starts to go back and forth. It's like overcorrecting a shopping cart that you're pushing the wrong direction as fast as you can backwards. It, it, it goes all over the place. And so you get the already problem child of a tail dragger, massively amplified by this huge movement of this suspension. And people tend to self-induce a ground loop in a wheelie. So it's something to be really aware of if you ever get one. That is why I decided to create something I thought about back when I was learning tail draggers, way back, and I finally went ahead and engineered it, designed it. I'm putting it on this plane. May I never ground loop this bird, but if I do, hopefully I won't hurt it or at all. And maybe if I do, not as bad. So let's show you what I did. I've got the fiberglass ready to go. Now I gotta put on this Chinese finger torture. <laughs> Garvin fiber over it. The fiberglass is all stranded the same direction for flex the, the way it's gonna impact if I ever ground loop my aircraft. But the carbon fiber is to help take side loading or any fracture sideways. So we want both. So I'm gonna do a couple layers of this and uh, bag it up. But it's gonna take me a few minutes to get this on and another set of hands. <laughs> Just in case I do screw up and I ground loop my plane, typically when it happens, and you've seen videos online all the time. Pilots don't get hurt in ground loops, but us guys do. They come down, they smack your aileron, they bend it up, they take this corner, they shove it forward, and the impact of the ground loop, because you have all this leverage out here on the end, hitting a non-moving surface, which is the ground, all of that stress is a shock load impact, it is the most damaging you can do. It cracks wing spars, it breaks things, it twists the wing because the impact's back here instead of at the front. My idea was this, to create a composite, basically a leaf spring out of composite material so it weighs very, very little, and take the energy from an impact and impact it on something that has give and transfer that energy back into the center of the wing rather than back here. Now, if we can take an impact of a wing from a ground loop and get 14 inches of travel before this tip hits here, 14 inches slowing the plane down virtually eliminates the shock load. Now, I'm not talking about full-blown wrecking an airplane um, and where you're gonna ball the whole wing into pieces, but I am talking about what happens all the time on tail dragger planes. That you see it often, sometimes people are lucky and it just chews them up a little and they replace the flap or skin, put some new fabric on a light cub, but usually it results in a lot of damage. So what I wanted was a tip strong enough to slow the impact, but if you it went far enough to hit here and go beyond, this would eventually break, and at that point, you wanna watch the wing spar. If this doesn't go up and hit here, I don't even come close to what this wing can handle for stress, and I know that if I went down and smacked this, spun the plane around, and it, it popped me back up, if this, didn't impact here and this didn't break, I have done nothing to this airplane. Um, I can get this about halfway. This kind of hurts. <laughs> My face is turning red, I know. What I just did there getting it part way, I know what I can squat. I probably put a good 300 plus pounds of pressure on that just now. I'm not <laughs> gonna test it on my airplane. This is a, a, if I really screw up day, maybe I can save my plane from some really bad damage. So I just finished my lens, cut off the excess material around the edge, 
left just over an eighth of an inch. Inside here, I made an eighth of an inch step, the thickness of the lens. So here is the front of the new light. <laughs> Let's get it installed. I just put the wingtip on for the very last time. It's done. I just gotta put screws in it. You know, putting it on is such a tight fit when it's a machined billet part to another machined billet part. I didn't think it was gonna go. I didn't think it was gonna go. It just was snug and then all of a sudden it just slides on and clicks. So it is perfect. That is attached, done, um, without a single screw in it. So I'm gonna put some screws in it and this wing tip is officially finished. All right guys, I got a bunch of comments on the last couple of videos and even personal messages. I love it, thank you guys, it's so much fun. Making these videos is just about spreading aviation, the excitement, the passion I have, try and light the fire of some new pilots out there. So I hope you guys like it. If you do, like it, comment, share it, subscribe, pass it along, because I'm having fun, and when the build's done with Draco, I'm gonna take it in some wild back country. I'm not done doing these videos. Come follow me along to my air races and turbulence for the back country with Draco or the next plane I build because I promise I am not done. I got a couple more on the drawing board. So like, subscribe, follow me. We're gonna do some cool, cool stuff. Let's get back to work. <laughs>